Welcome back. Today we're talking about a songwriting essential, rhyme. First, we'll get technical with some different types of rhyme, and then we'll talk about how you can use rhyme in what you make. So let's take a look at some definitions. We'll start with some simple one-syllable words. Monosyllabic words rhyme when they end with the same sound but begin with a different consonant sound, like beat, seat, street, and eat. These are perfect rhymes because the end sounds are exactly the same. We'll come back to that idea in a bit, but for now notice one, how the spelling doesn't matter, only the sound, and two, how the initial consonant sound can be made up of more than one letter sound, like in street, or can be no sound at all, like in eat. Simple enough, but with more than one syllable things start to get a bit trickier. Here are some more words that also rhyme with beat. Elite, receipt, and incomplete. Finding rhymes is all to do with where the stresses lie in the words. In English, like most languages, some syllables are stressed more than others. Try pronouncing elite and incomplete as elite and incomplete and watch how people look at you funny. With rhyme, the number of unstressed syllables at the beginning doesn't matter. Two words rhyme if everything from the last stressed syllable onwards, apart from that syllable's opening consonant sound, is the same. Because the final stress of all of these eat rhymes is on the last syllable, they're referred to with the not very politically correct term, masculine rhymes. Words where the final stress comes on the second to last syllable are called feminine rhymes. Like city, pretty and committee. Again, the spelling of the words and the number of unstressed syllables before the last stressed one doesn't matter. You can even make feminine rhymes out of multiple words, as long as the emphasis stays on the second to last syllable. If you want to get technical, you can call these composite or mosaic rhymes. Some words have a stress on the third to last syllable. These take the more gender neutral term, triple rhymes. Here are three you can use on your Tinder profile. Datable, relatable and inflatable. Triple rhymes are used more rarely than masculine and feminine rhymes, but they have a smart, playful effect when they're used well. So that's masculine, feminine and triple rhyme. And just as a reminder, all of the examples so far are perfect rhymes, as well as being masculine, feminine or triple. So let's pause briefly for an official definition. Two words are perfect rhymes when everything from their last stressed syllable onwards sounds identical, except for the consonant sound that begins that last stressed syllable. Perfect rhyme is the purest, cleanest type of rhyme. But when the sounds are very similar but not quite identical, they're called near rhymes. You might also hear them called slant or half rhymes. Near rhymes for beat might include deed, sheets, late, or me. And just like perfect rhymes, near rhymes can also be feminine or triple, like timing and minding, or harmony and artfully. You'll see it's a sliding scale how perfect or not perfect two rhymes can be. How perfect the rhymes you use in your work are is up to you. It depends on your personal aesthetic as well as what's common in the genre you write in. Perfect rhymes are the purest and most satisfying. When they use well, you get a little shot of endorphins when you hear two of them snap into place. But then in some genres, using only perfect rhymes sounds kind of stuffy and square. Then again, songs which use only near rhymes can sound lazy and unfocused. As usual, there are no rules. It's up to you to make a decision for each song. Lots of writers use a mix of rhymes. Before we move on, let's take a look at one common rhyme trap. They're called identities and they fall into the category of close but no cigar. They happen when everything from the last stressed syllable onwards is the same, but the opening consonant sound is identical as well. This includes words like seat and receipt, or leave and believe, and words called homophones, which are spelt differently but sound the same, like beat the musical thing and beat the vegetable thing. Most songwriters avoid identities because they don't have anything like the effect of a pair of proper rhymes, as you can hear. So, definitions done, let's talk about how you can use rhyme in your work. Rhymes are found most commonly at the ends of lines. 
two rhyme lines are much more memorable together, rhyming two words gives them a bit of extra emphasis, and the rhyming also acts as a kind of line punctuation. Where you put corresponding rhymes is called your rhyme scheme, and there are all kinds of effective rhyme schemes, but let's look at some common four-line examples. Two of the simplest also happen to be two of the best. And here are a couple that are slightly more challenging to write. In the last example, you'll see what's called an internal rhyme, where there's a composite rhyme, hey girl and say girl, within a single line. Finally, it's worth saying that becoming a rhyme Jedi takes a lot of practice. Saying exactly what you want to say isn't that difficult, and writing lines that rhyme isn't that difficult either, but doing both at the same time, all while making it sound effortless, is really challenging. You don't get good at that overnight. But if in doubt, it's worth remembering that lots of great songs don't rhyme much or even at all. As we said in the last episode, it's far better that a lyric makes sense but doesn't rhyme than vice versa. Well, thanks for watching. We've created a sneaky rhyme definitions cheat sheet you can download from thesongfoundry.com slash downloads. And as usual, there's much more about rhyme and rhyme structure in the Art of Songwriting, our ebook. We'll see you next time.